Hello from Istanbul, this is Atilla Eşilara, broadcasting for Real Turkey Channel with a new episode. Today, I am going to try to make sense of Turkey's new medium-term economic program. But if you don't have the time to watch the entire video, I am going to give you a quote from one of the leading economists of Turkey, Mr. Uğur Gürses. Let's see what he says. Turkey's new economic program is actually a dream economy for dreamland Turkey. I completely agree with that and will attempt to explain to you why the whole thing doesn't make sense. And finally, I will try to explain what can realistically be expected from the Turkish economy in 2022-2024. But first of all, for casual observers of Turkey who don't understand the nitty-gritty of the intricate art of Turkish policy making, let's ask the question, what is the medium-term economic program? It is a legacy of Turkey's IMF years when IMF required Turkey to issue a three-year economic program explaining the targets to be reached and, of course, the tools to reach them. Since then, that tradition has been maintained, so the medium-term economic program has become the most important policy paper of the Turkish government. Of course, to complement it, each year, Central Bank of Turkey explains its monetary policy and how its expected guidance can change under certain circumstances. What is really important to understand is that the medium-term economic program is not a wish list. It's not optional. It's a policy commitment by the government to its citizens and to all the stakeholders, including international lenders, companies that do business in Turkey, uh, multi-supranational institutions like IMF, World Bank, etc. What it will do? Why has IMF uh, required Turkey to issue three-year programs? Because one of the most important things in economics is foreseeability. I don't think that ex that word exists in the Oxford Dictionary or Webster's Dictionary, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the government may not reach its targets completely, but at least it is committed to using the tools at its disposal to make progress towards those goals. Of course, you know, the world is full of uh, uncertainties and black swans, hence you can, be, you can expect deviations from the program, but there has to be a solid core of policy and implementation for the investors, business sector, citizens to understand what the government intends to do. If people know, they'll make their plans accordingly. So in my view, the medium-term economic program is the most important policy document in Turkish politics. Uh, what has been the past experience with these medium-term economic programs, well, you know, they're uh, thrown in a trash bin at the moment they are pub published in the official gazette, and the situation has gotten worse since former economies are Ali Babajan has been expelled from the cabinet and the party by uh, President Mr. Erdogan. Ali Babajan and Mehmet Şimşek were the most knowledgeable in terms of economics, members of the cabinet. And when they were in office, they tried to guide Erdogan in the right direction. They weren't always successful, but whatever we have today in terms of fiscal discipline, treasury policy, um, you know, incomes policy, uh, we owe uh, to the legacy of Ali Babajan and Mehmet Şimşek. Unfortunately, in 2018, Turkey switched from the parliamentary to the presidential system, 
which essentially grants the authority to do anything with economic policy or anything else he wishes for that matter, to Mr. Erdogan. For instance, cabinet ministers are no longer, of the par no longer members of the parliament, uh, and they are actually officials or employees reporting to the president. Obviously, this system has a main side effect, which is that there is really no predictability. In economics terms, it is an utterly discretionary economic policy. The opposite is a rule-based economic policy. I'm not saying rule-based economic policy is always the best, but if we consider the scala, the range from arbitrary or discretionary to rule-based policy making, countries that do perform well in economic terms seems to be uh, operating closer to the rule-based economy side. Unfortunately, there are no more any rules in the Turkish economy. The rules are made by Mr. Erdogan, which by itself I have no objection to. Unfortunately, he changes his mind quite quickly. Therefore, we have seen the Turkish economic performance deteriorate significantly since 2018. I'm sure I will receive a comment, or hopefully many comments, reminding me that according to Stat figures, Turkish economy registered an astounding growth rate of 21% in the second quarter of this year. Of course, every economy did. Because last year, in 2020, in the second quarter, most of the time we were under curfews or lockdowns. As a result, the base effect makes these quarter's results look outstanding, sort of like a mirror that magnifies your image. In reality, the way Americans or Europeans measure their GDP is from the previous quarter to the quarter of the data. In those terms, Turkish economy registered only 0.9% growth. Uh, previously, growth in the first quarter was 2.2%. So you can imagine that Turkish economy actually didn't accelerate in the second quarter of 2021. Contrary to the headline GDP figure, there has been a massive slowdown. But the, the biggest problem with the government is that it never meets its inflation targets. It's disastrous simply because fighting inflation doesn't only require disciplined fiscal and monetary policy, but also credibility. If you are a central bank through the monetary policy and a government through fiscal and incomes policy strive constantly to reach Turkey's inflation target, which is 5%, then the actors in the economy will believe in that target and adjust their expectations of future price and wage increases in line with the 5% target. Once you miss that opportunity and constantly uh, miss the target on the upside, well, then everyone calculates their own inflation and you have this negative feedback loop that goes from negative expectations about inflation to sticky inflation. That's why uh, missing the inflation target has been the biggest fault of the medium-term economic program. Now let's look at the targets uh, and then address the question of why he it became the laughing stock of Turkish economists. I'm going to so show you some charts here. These are from a Global Source Partners uh, research note. As a disclosure, I am also an advisor to the Global Source Partners. I am their political analyst for Turkey. I'm not going to go through the whole list, but to understand the inconsistencies, we need to explain, we need to uh, read some of the parameters. For instance, uh, uh, in the duration of the medium-term economic program, the government expects GDP to grow 5%, 5.5%, 5.5%, and 5.5% respectively. 
this is worth noting uh, because it's one of the main implausibilities of the medium-term economic program. And that's what Erdogan complete, uh, constantly brags about. By the end of 2014, Turkey will have a one trillion economy. And how are we reaching these targets? Look at total fixed capital investment. It accelerates throughout the medium term economic program. And in line, domestic savings increase as well. In other words, we're going to have an investment, you know, from a domestic perspective, we're going to have an investment driven economy. And here are the other targets. For those of you uh, who are interested in Turkish markets, the medium-term economic program doesn't explicitly set exchange rate targets, but you can read them. So, uh, these are average values. The average dollar TL rate in 2022 would be 9 liras and 27 cents, and in the succeeding year, 9 liras and 77 percent and so on and so forth. If you look at the column right underneath it, you see Turkish lira depreciating less year by year. So that so, so much so that by the end of 2014, the average depreciation of the Turkish currency vis-a-vis -vis the dollar would only be 5 percent. That happened last time in 2013, I believe. To put things in perspective, as of today, year to date, Turkish lira depreciated some 11% against the dollar. Now, here is a quote from a Bloomberg article which I should have referenced with a link. I apologize to Bloomberg and please don't sue me, which gives you a better idea of main targets. Let's read it. The medium-term forecast foresees inflation slowing to 9.8% in 2022 and 8% in 2023. 2023, yeah. Note that these targets are higher than central banks' own targets. One wonders whether they operate in the same country. Also, to make a comparison, as of August, Turkey's CPI inflation was roughly 19%. So the first question that we need to un under understand is, how do you go from 19% to 9.8%, so a 50% reduction in inflation, while you achieve 5% growth in the interim. And at the same time, again, reading from the Bloomberg article, current account deficit to GDP ratio will be 2.6% in 2021 and 2.2% in 2022. Well, believe, believe you me, that would be a miracle simply because Turkey's long run, that is optimal GDP growth rate, is estimated at around 3 to 3.5% 3 GDP. What is the import of the optimal GDP growth rate? If a country exceeds that growth rate, then it starts developing problems. These problems are usually current account, higher current account deficits and higher inflation figures. So, when we go back to the medium-term economic program, you see the major inconsistency. Uh, the AKP government is betting on significantly higher growth rate than the optimal rate through 2022 to 2024, while the current account deficits shrink and the inflation slows substantially from 19% to 8% in 2023. Is that, is that possible? Yes, it is possible, of course. This is why God has invented structural reforms. Essentially, 
you have to readjust the settings of the economy so that it can grow faster and at the same time as side effects produce less inflation and current account deficit does the new medium term economic program describe the tools to make these structural reforms or to achieve these rather inconsistent targets well there are a couple of pages there but there is really no description of what will be done and more importantly it's really copy paste from previous medium term economic programs the whole thing is a 36 percent 36 page document and anyone who reads it will immediately realize that the Erdogan government has no intention to engage in serious structural reforms. It's just that, you know, uh, they're just throwing it out there. Am I alone in my thinking? Well, let's look at some expert sources. The first is Mr. Ur Gürses, who also uh, honored our cover. Uh, he is one of the leading independent economists of Turkey, independent in the sense that he is neither pro nor anti-government, uh, extremely honest in his opinions, and has held high positions in the central bank. Uh, again, he basically puts what I've just said in uh, more formal terms. To read, the economic growth forecast is predicted and declared as 5%, and this is justified by a projected increase in private consumption by around 4 to 5 percent per year and an increase in private sector fixed capital investment by 7 or 8 percent. Thus, a formula is found to reach the math of 5 percent. The 2022-2024 medium-term economic program is processed with such a formula. From 2022 to 2024, private consumption was assumed to be increasing by an average of 4.7%, while private investments would increase by up to 8%. Uh, and he makes the point that in each medium-term economic program, the same targets have been repeated and they have never been reached. And... Uh, the one trillion target was previously set for 2018. Now it's delayed to 2024. Here is another expert opinion, again from a global source partners report, but I didn't write it. Uh, the Economist wrote it. With budget deficit hovering around 3.5% GDP this year and next year and shrinking modestly to under 3% by the end of the program period, private sector is expected to run a surplus in its financial or savings investment balances. As private savings increase gradually, that is, the economy somehow manages to achieve 5.5% growth, this cannot happen unless there is a large positive productivity shock. But that's a pipe dream in the light of the track record of past 15 years, during which average total factor productivity growth was nil. And given the massive institutional erosion that the country has experienced. True, inflation is now predicted to end the year higher at 16.2 versus 14.4, 14.1 in the July inflation report by the central bank, and then decelerate much more gradually to 7.6% by the end of the program period, in contrast to 5% according to central bank's projections. But this tolerance for slightly higher inflation and a losing monetary policy stance is not sufficient to explain how Turkey will manage to grow over 5% and contain the current account deficit at the same time. Okay, well, what have we said? So, you know, this program is simply a pipe dream or a laughing stock. Uh, under foreseeable circumstances, it has no chance of being realized. So, 
I'm going back to the final question. What can realistically be expected from Turkish economy in 2022-2024? In capital letters, my dear audience, stagflation. This year, once the base effects are out of the data stream, Turkey's growth rate will decline to a pace of 2 to 3% per annum. Given a population growth rate of roughly one and a quarter, including migrants and refugees, that means that the average real GDP, real capita GDP, would increase by 1.5% or so for Turks. Inflation is extremely sticky, and as both Ur Gürses and the Global Source Partners report that I quoted explained, there is really no mechanism to bring it down to the targets of 9.887, etc. We think the inflation is stuck at 15%. Right there, you have stagflation. You have an economy that grows to at most 3% per year, but produces at least 15% inflation. That is the dynamic definition of stagflation. And of course, if you have 15% inflation, but a currency depreciation rate of, let's show it again, look at the bottom of the table. So inflation stays at 15%, on average through 2022 to 2024, but Turkish lira actually gains value in real terms. Against the dollar, it only depreciates, okay, just a second, 11.7%, and then suddenly 5.4% and 5%. This means that Turkey's imports I'm sorry, Turkey's imports will explode because in inflation-adjusted terms, Turkish lira is gaining value. So people would prefer luxury consumption goods over uh, Turkish domestic production. That means you are not going to reach your current account deficit targets. Again, maybe I will do another video on structural reforms and what Turkey needs to do to get out of this low growth, high inflation trap. But this has already been long enough. And I want to thank you once again for watching Real Turkey channel. We don't have a large audience, but that's fine with me because the comments I read are extremely positive. Even the negative ones, uh, they give me great joy to be criticized. And hopefully we, sh we shall increase our content uh, in the winter months. If you like this video, check out the others. Uh, Real Turkey channel has broadcast over 200 videos. And hey, if you know someone who has business in Turkey or who observes Turkey for other reasons, send them a link. This is Attila Yeşilada broadcasting for Real Turkey channel saying goodbye from Istanbul. Get vaccinated, stay healthy.